Right, in this video I'm going to continue to look at titration calculations, but I'm going to focus on the ones used to find percentage purity. Um, if you're asked to find percentage purity, you're going to need two things. You're going to need the actual number of moles uh, of the chemical, and you will find this by doing a typical titration calculation using your titration table. Uh, so the actual number of moles of a chemical that you've got, and then the number of moles that you would expect to have based on the mass that you dissolved. So in this case, the chemical in question is sodium hydrogen carbonate. I'm told I'm dissolving 2.50 grams. So based on the mass I'm dissolving, I would do mass divided by formula mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate and work out the number of moles I'm expecting based on the mass I've dissolved. And that would be my theoretical number of moles. However, because we're looking at percentage purity, that would imply that this isn't fully pure. It says here it's an impure. So even though I've got 2.50 grams, it's not all going to be sodium hydrogen carbonate. To work out the actual number of moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate that I've got, that's when I'm going to do my titration, and that will tell me the actual number. Um, so we're going to start by doing the titration to work out the actual number of moles. Um, as we saw before, with these calculation questions, they typically give you the titration information towards the end of the question. So it starts off by telling you about making the solution, and then it talks about the titration itself. So if I go through the question, I can see that I'm titrating sodium hydrogen carbonate, and they tell me I've got 25 centimetres cubed of that in the titration. So I'm going to start by writing myself a, an equation. Um, so sodium hydrogen carbonate is NaHCO3, uh, and as I said, I've got 25 centimetres cubed of that. What am I titrating this with? Uh, it says here that I'm titrating with, with sulfuric acid. Uh, the concentration of my sulfuric acid is here, and the volume of sulfuric acid I use in the titration is here. So I'm going to be reacting this with plus H2SO4, volume 28.3, concentration 0 0.05. Um, before I can plug this into my titration table, I'm going to need to finish off the question so I can get there, sorry, finish off the equation so I can work out a ratio. Um, this is another just typical acid-base reaction. Um, I'm going to form a salt, water, and then CO2 because it's a carbonate base. So the salt I'm going to form is going to be sodium sulfate, Na2SO4. I'm also going to form water, H2O, and I'm going to form carbon dioxide, CO2. To balance this, I've got two sodiums on the right. I need two on the left. That gives me two, and two is four hydrogens. So I need four hydrogens on the right. Uh, and I also have two carbons there on the left. And I'm going to need two carbons there on the right. So my equation is now balanced, and we can see that the ratio between my sodium hydrogen carbonate and H2SO4 is two is to one. So now that I have that, I can plug that information into my little titration table. I'm tur turning the volumes into decimeters cubed by dividing by 1,000, uh, and then I'm filling the values into my table, and I work out this value here. So this value here is the number of moles that I actually have of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Um, and because I've just done the titration 25 centimeters cubed, then this value is the number of moles I've got in 25 centimetres cubed. Now if we go back and we look at the question, we'll see that it was dissolved in 250 centimetres cubed. So when I work out moles using the 2.50 grams, I'm going to be working out the number of moles in 250 centimetres cubed. I can't have my actual moles per 25 and my theoretical moles per 250. I need to have them both per the same volume. So I'm going to go back to my actual number of moles and I'm going to work out how many I've got per 250 centimetres cubed by just multiplying by 10. So this value here now represents the actual number of moles I've got of sodium hydrogen carbonate in 250 centimetres cubed. I'm now going to work out how much I expected to have based on the mass I dissolved. So I'm going to call that my theoretical moles. The mass I dissolved was 2.50 grams. The formula mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate is 84. So this number here represents, oh sorry, this number here represents the number of moles I was expecting to have based on the mass I dissolved. Now that I've got my actual and I've got my theoretical, I can work out my percentage purity. So percentage purity is going to be the actual number of moles from my titration divided by the theoretical number of moles from the mass dissolved times by 100, and I get 95.0%.
Another way you could do this is instead of putting moles in for percentage purity, you could do mass. So at this point of the question here, when I work out the actual number of moles I have, what I could do is I could take those number of moles, times it by the formula mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate, and work out the mass that I've got. So 0 0.0283 times 84. This tells me that based on the number of moles I got from the titration, that I've actually dissolved 2.377 grams. If we look at the question, we're told, well, no, you dissolved 2.50 grams. So I've got the number of grams uh, based on my titration, the number of grams that I actually dissolved, uh, and you can get that as a percentage, and it works out exactly the same. It works out as 95%. So you can either have both quantities in moles and calculate the percentage, or both quantities in mass. But before you plug them in to this little equation, make sure that they're per the same volume. In this case, I did both moles per 250 centimeters cubed, before I worked out the percentage purity. The next question is similar. It's, it's, it's basically the same thing. It, it just looks harder because you've got, well, two different equations. You've got a far more complicated kind of redox reaction here instead of just a typical acid base. And um, you've also got quite a lot of information in the question. So again, it could be a question that you might find quite overwhelming. But if you follow the same steps as I outlined above, um, you, you will hopefully end up with the right answer. So it's another percentage purity question. You told the mass of the iron that you dissolve. So again, what you could do here, or what we're gonna end up doing, is we're gonna work out based on this mass of iron that we've actually dissolved, we are going to work out in theory, how many moles do we have based on the mass that we've dissolved? How many are we expecting to have based on that mass of iron that we're dissolved? Uh, and then we're gonna come down here, we're gonna look at the actual titration to work out the actual number of moles that we have. The reason this is a bit complicated is because it's done in two steps. So they have the iron, they dissolve it on, in, in an acid, which they tell you is a large excess. And when you react the iron, the solid iron with the acid, you form iron uh, ions, so Fe2 plus ions. It's then those Fe2 plus ions that are titrated with potassium manganate. So that's why I've got a second equation down here. The iron reacts with an acid to release iron ions, and then the iron ions are titrated against potassium permanganate. So again, to find our actual moles, we're gonna start with the titration. I'm gonna be starting with this information here at the bottom of the question. I'm just gonna try and pick out the information that's actually used in the titration. Um, so what am I told here? I'm told 25 centimeters cubed of the diluted solution was titrated. What solution are they talking about? They're talking about this solution up here, iron reacting with sulfuric acid to form an iron two sulfate solution. So that's the solution and 25 centimeters cubed of that is going to be titrated. So when I'm writing this into my table, yes, I'm forming iron two sulfate, but you can see from my equation here that sulfate ions have not been included. They're spectator ions, they're not involved. They've just included the iron ions. So that's what I'm gonna do as well. I'm gonna write that I've got these iron ions that are involved in the titration. And I saw above that I've got 25 centimeters cubed of the solution that contains these iron ions. So what am I titrating this against? Well, it says here that I'm titrating it with potassium manganate. So again, if I look at my equation, I'm not gonna see potassium, which is K anywhere in my equation. Again, it's a spectator ion, it's not involved. The manganate ions are which are, what are actually involved and that's MnO4 minus. So I've got MnO4 minus also involved in the titration. Uh, and if I have a look at, again at the values that I've got, um, I'm told that I've got 20 centimeters cubed of the potassium manganate that contains these ions. Uh, and I'm also told the concentration of this potassium manganate. So I'm gonna fill in those numbers here. My volume is 20 centimeters cubed and my concentration is 0 0.0200 moles per decimeters cubed. Um, if I have a look at my, my equation here, the second equation, this is the uh, equation for the actual titration, uh, and you can see that your ratio between the iron and the MnO4 minus is five is to one. 
So using all of that information, I'm going to be able to fill in the rest of my titration uh, table. Um, first thing I'm going to need to do, though, is convert these values to decimeters cubed. So I'm just going to get rid of them from my table to save me having to draw it again. This was 25, so 0 0.025 and this is 20, so 0 0.02. So with that information, I can then work out the number of moles of potassium manganate. I'll use my ratio to then work out the number of moles of iron ions uh, that I have in my equation. Um, again, it's important to, to, to recognize what that, that number is. I know the number of moles of Fe2 plus ions in 25 centimeters cubed equals 2 by 10 to the minus 3. Um, but before I can work out, uh, before I can plug this into my percentage uh, yield, sorry, my percentage purity um, formula, I need to make sure that I've got the right information. So at the moment, I've got moles of iron 2 plus in 25 centimeters cubed. If I go back and I look at my question, I can see that my original iron was initially dissolved with some acid, but then the whole solution was made up to 250. So I need to know the number of ions, sorry, number of moles per 250. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. If I know it per 25 to work it out per 250, I'm just gonna multiply the number of moles by 10. I'm gonna end up with 0 0.02 moles in 250 centimeters cubed. And the other important thing to recognize here is this is the number of moles of Fe2+. What I'm asked about in the question is iron, iron itself, iron as a solid. So iron as a solid is Fe, it is not Fe2+. And when I'm working out the theoretical moles here, I'm gonna be getting the moles of iron, Fe, I'm not going to be getting the moles of iron 2 plus. So this is when I need to use my first equation and use the ratio between Fe2 plus and Fe to work out how many moles of Fe that I've got. So I'm just going to write here the ratio between the two. I have got my Fe2 plus and I've got Fe. If I look at my equation, you can see you've got a one is to one ratio between those two. So I'm going to write that down. And we've worked out the number of moles of Fe2 plus ions in 250, and that was 0 0.02. Because I've got a 1 is to 1 ratio, I must also have 0 0.02 moles of iron in 250 centimetres cubed. All right, so this value here, oh, sorry, this value here represents my actual, the actual moles of iron now, not Fe2 plus, of iron in my 250 centimeters cubed. So that's my actual moles. Uh, I then need to just work out the theoretical moles. Uh, so this is a little bit easier. I'm told um, in the question that the mass of iron dissolved is 1.15 grams. Iron has the formula mass of 56. You can get that straight from your periodic table. Um, so 0 0.02053, that is the number of moles in theory that I was expecting to have based on the amount uh, of the mass of iron that I dissolved. And you can see that these two values are very, very similar, uh, but they're not exactly the same, which allows us to calculate percentage purity. So if I'm doing percentage purity then at the end, I'm taking the actual number of moles that I know I have based on my titration, and that's per 250 centimeters cubed, and I'm dividing it by the number of moles I was expecting to have based on the mass dissolved. I'm getting that as a percentage, and it works out as being 97.4%. Um, so that, again, is your percentage purity. So again, the take on there, you need to make sure that you have got everything per the same volume um, and you also need to make sure after when you've got a situation like this where you've got two equations if the things you are titrating against each other uh, is not what you're given information about at the start and um, to use the ratio in that first equation before you plug everything into your percentage purity uh, formula.